on this video we will uh, go over like blocking for a C yeah be one sec finishing this here I want to uh, thank the people um, people on <laughs> people, uh, on Twitter for uh, checking for what was going to be updates uh, hopefully by the end of next month it'll be uh, completed and I, I will put that in there everyone that signed up for the uh, membership you'll be able to see the the full version of that or the first I guess you could say part of the scene And um, just want to let uh, you know, I do appreciate uh, anyone, either all, also uh, for YouTube. Uh, appreciate anyone following me on YouTube. I have to kind of build this YouTube thing from scratch because I wasn't really paying attention to it. I was really doing that for. Uh, like tutorial work and things like that when people ask a question or they email me a question uh, I usually I, I use the YouTube to get that out to everyone so but now what I'm trying to do is I'm gonna upload the uh, the feature on YouTube as well gotta find out what are like the all uh, things on YouTube and how that will work but um just want to uh, let you know I appreciate that and I hope everyone is doing well I think what we'll do here is kind of move this out of the way for now because I know it's going to irritate me if I start messing around with it. <clears throat> and um, as far as videos, any, any video that you want to me to go over you can always let me know any of uh, those young artists out there that want to get more updates you'll be able to do that soon it's trying to work on a lot of different I would guess I would say basic tutorials and trying to put like a time map in there and then like have line by line the instructions on exactly how it was done I was looking at a couple other people that are on here they uh, were doing like these one step two steps but I think what I'll do is I'm going to collaborate it together with the the video. So I'll 
try to set that out for where they'll be both. And a lot of the stuff, I will be trying to figure out how to break down a lot of things uh, on YouTube as well. Quicker upload if you kind of think about it in that way. Send me a, a text on the other. It's like I wonder if you can go live with some of this. Maybe that might be a good idea. Well, I'll be able to maybe do a live or something like that where I can take questions while I'm working on it. So there's been a, a kind of a debate on this AI and, and what that's going to kind of look like going forward. And a lot of people were like, I can't remember what I said exactly, but I think it was on the lines of, you can kind of marry both of them. Because a lot of people out there, like whenever you start doing any kind of animation, it is, I would say the best part of it is going to probably be after uh, you rig a character completely, would probably be the, uh, I don't know, the best part of it because once you get that out of the way, you can start kind of manipulating your character and starting on um, you know your storytelling which in some cases might be hard so I would say the The rig is probably bad when it comes to how long it could be to generate it, especially if you have a a feature or something like that. It's very time consuming. Sometimes you'll get a little bit drained once you're uh, doing it. But when you complete it, it's a good feeling because you know you can you know, you save it and it's all will be there. And then sometimes you can kind of swap out. Once you get a body or once you have a, uh, I would say a fully rigged character, it's easy to substitute those uh, in Moho. And Moho is a uh, animation tool. M O H O. And it was, I think they changed the name, but um, it is called Lost Marvel. Um, sorry, Lost Marbles. I don't know if it may be a reference to Peter Pan or something like that, but Moho um, was, I can't remember who they were under before they broke or separated, I guess, because they had a lot of features. It was back when I was using, like, well, back, I don't know, how long ago was that? 
but I think there was Toon Boom. What was that thing called before Moho? God, I'm blanking on it. It'll probably come to me later. I think it started with an S. I can't really be sure about that. If anyone knows it, you know, you can put it in the Twitter for me, and I'll, I'll, but I'm pretty sure it was com called something else, because they had a moho, uh, a couple of different ones, because they had a pro, and then they had the, uh, the basic, for just like basic things, it didn't really back then go into detail or anything like that. But I remember um, back then because I was kind of trading off on um, finding out what was better. And I think the option for that was, I want to say Adobe because they had After Effects, which is technically can be used, but I remember After Effects and then the Toon uh, Boom and then uh, there was another name for Moho but uh, for the Moho it's bothering me a little bit I'll, I might check it in a second here on the webs When we ever that debate on, I meant to add this because when we was talking about it on uh, Twitter, somebody I can't remember who it was, but someone made a comment about like the old animators where they're doing everything by hand, and they were like, "Oh, well, maybe they're bitter about the AI and all this other stuff." A lot of um, artists will look at it like, oh, well, you're technically cheating in a sense because you're not actually drawing anything. So I don't think, it, and when they said, I don't think anyone in, in the animation field would be motivated by caring, you know, about that, especially if they're really a. Uh, uh, real good artists in a way but I remember that debate I don't know how how would you or you know bring up something else on Twitter how would you feel if animation at the time was hand <laughs> you know what I mean and then drawing each frame right But I don't think a lot of those kind of people that are like that, you know, are angry. I did. I do hear a lot about AI and, and kind of blinking on, you know, a lot of it. You could still have to get cl like cl anything you're drawing. You're still gonna have to get it cleaned up. So unless the AI get to a point where, it can, and maybe it will like these full-fledged stories or whatever maybe they're close I don't know but a lot of um, people that used to have to pay animators they would look at that as a viable option right and I think they were having that that debate on the 
uh, licensing of your the like a couple stars faces like you know going into a uh, idea where it'd be like oh well you know we just want to rent your face for this movie where you don't really have to act anymore you basically <laughs> don't really have to do the work all we want is a likeness or be able to use your likeness right so I do remember that debate I in I think it was the Hollywood debate when they went on straight it's a couple years back but I remember clearly they were trying to like hey because if, if they could get to a point where it could be all animation and it won't be super expensive studios will do that <laughs> they will definitely do that you know and I don't got anything against them but I'm just you know stating like If they don't really have to pay someone extra, be, most movies is the most of the budget is going to be going to the movie stars. So if they can figure out a way to get out of that, they definitely would do that. Where am I? Oh, I see where. I was just like, what did this? What did I just do? That's why you messed up. And what I'm talking about here, so this technically is going to be like a drawstring kind of setup for the, this costume. But if you look here, where this U is, the U should be connecting to this little white part here. So it does look like a piece of string going from in and then out here on that side. So when you make a mistake, just erase and start over. You know what? I keep forgetting about what I've been doing. And it saves me time. Which is great. So what I'll do here is I'm going to go ahead and grab it. Well, let's let's use the let's use this. All right. So instead of having to do this over on this side, I'm just going to grab this like so. Uh, oh, we messed that up. Let's try it again. All right, under the chin. Come on, chin, get out of the way. All right, there and da da. So, edit, copy, edit, paste, yeah, okay, yeah, we got, sometimes I can't see it. And let's flip it on this side, like so. And voila, completion. All right, looks like right. Uh, they, they look this. Oh, right by the neck, though. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, right up there. That looks all right. Oh, I meant to add this on there as well. I'm going to go over, someone's asking about the uh, audio and different things like that. I'm, I'll go over that really quick if, on this video as well. Now, what was I doing? I want this, just go over right here. So, I want, I want it to be uneven. And back to the likeness thing with the, the movie stars. 
would they I think a couple movie stars wouldn't like it because I think they really look at it um, their job is kind of like a theater type mood right where they may be offended if you just ask them to hey we just want to use your face and we do everything AI and you can stay at home and not do anything uh, I think a lot of them care about well let me put it this one there's a couple artists that I look at I was like wow that guy is actually a chameleon he changes into something totally else and the thing the ones that come to mind are going to be right and points should point there okay I see all right let's do a point so um the ones that come to mind when we're talking about like oh well maybe they won't allow the studio to use their likeness I always look at it it's like oh it's gonna be someone that really is looking at movie making as a uh, as a art in a sense right And the two that I always pay attention to is going to be Daniel De Luz and everything I've ever seen him in. I can't remember what was the first movie I. I think he was in like this Irish movie before he did Gangs in New York. like an IRA type of you know film you know IRA back in the days when the English they wanted they were fighting against basically the, the English government and they were using bombs to like stop them from like taking over things I guess it was in their country and I think he was in a movie like that. I can't remember. But the the one that really knocked it out the ballpark. Once you see him in Gangs in New York, and even down to the accent, sometimes it's like it's like this guy is really someone else. <laughs> and that's rare with these uh, these movie stars, where a person just you know, there's good acting where you're just doing words, right? No accent, no nothing else, right? So if you play a dad in one movie, right? You play a I don't know, uh executive it you know it's just playing a guy, right? When I see Daniel Day Lewis, oh I refer, I remember what I think I remember what it was. Last of the Mohicans. I think that was the first one. I was like, oh, this is this guy's great. I think it was him. One second.
right so like I was saying here So, uh, so who did I say? I said Daniel Day Lewis was one of them where they changed into somebody else. And the other one was um, uh, Johnny Depp. When he played that, like that movie with, I think it was Whitey. I don't remember. He's basically a gangster. I can't remember what it was called, but anything I see him in like that, it's always like, oh well, this it is a different person. I'm trying to think, there was another old old movie where. I can't remember, but I think he was a, um, like a book dealer or something like that. So whenever I see him, I'm like, oh, well, I don't know any Oscars, you guys probably got a few, but so I will put them at the top is like transforming into, you know, a, a whole nother person like that, that, uh, Daniel Day Lewis with there will be blood that is some super acting because you see him one stage like, oh well this guy's everything changes like and if you look at other movies that he's been in before and you see all the different types of roles there are in that sense it's all he it's a different person And did we make this too wide? Eh, but we have to make it into a circle. So let's. Yeah, it's close enough, but we'll use it. I'm going to just fix that circle part. And if you know anyone that. Um, that I didn't mention as far as like great actors where you feel like they're like a chameleon put it in the uh, the Twitter thing let's see what we come up with but I, those are the two guys were like and even though people look at Johnny Depp as like playing all of these like Edward Scissorhands and the Pirates of the uh, Caribbean Right, like silly roles, kind of. Was he the Willy? Was he? Did he do Willy Wonka? I can't remember. He probably did. I'm not gonna do any edits for. I don't think I've ever seen Daniel Day Lewis play like a whimsical character like Johnny Depp has. Like a comedy type thing, you know what I mean? So if I was to have to pick one or the other, I have to give it to Johnny Depp because he's played clownish type characters. And that Whitey Bulger uh, movie was crazy. <laughs> crazy. It's like the person disappears into a character like that. It's the one you got to kind of respect. So if I had to choose him over, Daniel Day-Lewis has always been, let me take that back. So there's a like a, a list of different ones that I'm like, oh, okay, I like this guy. Hmm, drop the microphone. So if I did have to choose, I'd probably say 
uh, Johnny Depp. Until I see him, like Daniel Day Lewis, play some kind of clownish type character. So, let's wait on here. And that should be a little bit wider, I would say, here. So yeah, if anyone else knows anyone that they feel is better than those two. What was I saying before? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, so like honorable mentions, I would say Denzel Washington would probably be one of them. Almost though, there's some people that are, when they're in a movie, I don't even hesitate. I'm like, whatever they're in, I, I'm watching it. So, <laughs> someone remember? Well, it's kind of biased. You're just picking guys. There are a couple women that I look at that actually transform into someone else but I would still have to see more can't remember a name yet I guess my favorite one I don't really like saying that because like what's your favorite one like I don't even think that's a thing really but what would it be can't think of it offhand but the honorable mentions for me are always going to be people that play a character but the film is so good and their acting is basically their it's another guy they're just playing just in a different you know so if you know anyone else that kind of changes into the character completely I mean you could say technically Anthony Hopkins but sometimes he's just playing another guy in a lot of the films I guess the only one you can look at would be Science of the Lambs where I guess he's, I mean, he's playing a psychopath in a way, but he's still just, like, I want to see, like, accents, uh, I want to see body matter, like,
like like man, or like that's why you go back to Daniel Day Lewis. When you see him in each one of these characters, it's a whole different way of walking, talking, and I was looking him up before. I was trying to remember a movie, but he might be one of those. I shouldn't say weird, but those people that st <laughs> stay in character. Uh, Oh, you're um so <sighs> would I consider him in that category? We're talking about Joaquin uh, Phoenix uh, at the Phoenix. Would I put him in that category? Eh, I guess in in some roles, but again, you know, just playing a guy. Maybe with an accent or something, but not completely a hundred percent in a character. And that goes with Denzel, even though he's been in a lot of stuff. So there's that.
so coming up in one second while I finish messing around with this One question I'll go over. <laughs> I forgot what's this. I just forgot I was on a mic. Someone asked me, "Rig, uh, what is that?" And like, not anyone um, that's already in animation. So, and anytime they're speaking of a rig, it just basically means if you have a, it could be a lot of different. It doesn't necessarily really have to be a character, but most of the time it applies to that, and it's basically creating a, a puppet basically with all the different movements that a puppet or a human would make and it is time consuming especially if you're doing a lot of details most of the time you'll start to see a, a quicker timeline for yourself because the, the more you do the uh, those rigs it kind of becomes easy but a lot of it once you have a template for you know what you're doing uh, that does make it easy because sometimes you can just swap things out not always but sometimes where you can you know change the, a, the costume or whatever but basically what it is and then um, like I said, I think I said this before, it's like a gift and a curse. Once it's completed, you're happy. You're super happy. Because you won. Once you start seeing the facial expressions, and this happens a lot in a character. A lot of our, more I say, our generation. It's a difference between movies and cartoons. So if you look at, you know, your grandparents where they weren't really in that uh, that generation of people that were watching cartoons. So if you start looking at the that 70s, 80s uh, kids during that time, they grew up on it. 
So when you go and ask someone that's a little bit older, oh, what's a good movie or what's something that you like that you watch on television? Back then, they wouldn't have said <laughs> Disney cartoon, <laughs> right? Or anything like that. They would be, you know, uh, which one? Casablanca or like, you know, films where there there's adults. So a lot of times it's weird to them because it does seem like are the generations like oh we're kids forever in a sense I guess yes and no because our favorite animation like the Simpsons and you know we grew up on that and adults watch cartoons in our generation so a lot of uh, I say a lot but sometimes people that are older well oh, this generation is still watching cartoons and, and things of that nature yeah but that's what we were we grew up on a lot of us stuff like that so but I remember speaking to somebody about that before how the, it's just a total shift of what we consider entertainment for uh, our generation and I think of course it's going to be weird to be like, oh well, animation, uh, a lot of it is more and more popular for us, and we kind of love it, so, but yeah, the, the person was asking, um, whenever I go to any kind of movie, uh, it doesn't matter to me. Because I, I classify movies in one way kind of thinking. It's like, oh, was it good? Uh, I don't care if it's black and white. I don't care if it's a cartoon. I don't care if it's whatever it is. Whatever it is, as long as it's a good story, that's what counts. around with that a little bit later all right so what was I doing what was I doing what was I doing oh the blocking okay yeah the blocking all right so most of it's gonna be kind of be it just depends on what you're kind of looking for here which one did I do yeah okay so on the blocking technique basically whenever you set the character up most of the whole thing is not going to be moving it's going to be separated right so in this sense blocking would consider be like because technically he is at let me make sure these match. So the top one up here on the map. And you can play around with the angles as well. It's up to you. Oh, that's right about there. 
later I guess so on this one to rig it you would just separate uh, that so the, the parts that you're going to be moving so it would be the the head in the body and the block in here, this will basically be on top. Like you see it here. So those are the pieces that you would break down. Like so. So you'll have all these. And this body piece, uh, remember wherever you make those cuts, it's going to be cut here. Where the arm is, so you'll cut this out all the way down, like so. So, where you just have the body. The reason why you see when you stop here is because this is the part of the arm that um, would be open, right? Because the body would start at a certain point and end at a certain point. And I'm just doing this as a rough draft. So, your cut would be let's duplicate this duplicate so the cut would be all of this separated from the body part and the same is over here Right, so you basically carve out this part here, you know, going all the way between because this part will just come off. But you cut that, so this technically could be three pieces or, f or uh, five because if you want to make another cut where the elbow is, which is right around there. right where the elbow is so you basically have two pieces the top part of the arm and then uh, the second part of the arm and you would basically do that on both sides whenever you draw something and you don't really want to have to match it up you can just do a mirror like you uh, we did when for the the jacket that I did before so yeah, those will be the cuts and note because those are the only points that are going to have movement with it so that's all you would need here and you would also rig the head uh, that we, we've done that before but I'll go over rig heads again but that's how that would be set up
Operação Once you do that And I'll, I will put all these pieces up uh, If you want to grab them all So I'll put it in a, a vector or PDF So you can have the pieces yourself So this would basically look like this here but technically you would need a chair uh, I'll just use this as an example This would not uh, be a chair I would be using for this, uh, but I'm just showing you an example of what the part would be. Because technically, is going to be a part that you only see. And you can change the size with the blocking, just depend on what you want to do. Because at a point, So if you're setting it up kind of and this should be the only piece that you see, right? So close up here. So, so it would the blocking part would only be, and you don't have to put this black here. Once you use it, so if you're using, especially if you're using Moho, what's this? Oh, so I found that the other day. And this is something I was working on before. So uh, on the the blocking part here, that's what it would be, because this would so the camera angle will have this in the the front. And again, the black. Just think of it as out of the frame. Uh, or out of the camera frame, you only be seeing this part here. And
And I'm just checking something for me. See if I wanted to swap that out. So what I'll do is I'm gonna I'll put all those pieces in that you. Uh, so I remember this. I gotta remember this scene. What was the color? Yellow, I think. Was it yellow? Yeah, I think it was yellow. So whenever you do change like a frame or something like that, ow, this is not going to work for me. Alright, all right, that's a little bit better. Whenever you're doing any kind of like action or drama in the sense, you can use color elements as uh, masks to give it a different feel than just like normally like that, alright? when you're trying to make some kind of action and you want to kind of manipulate the the, the camera lens in a sense because you're using this as a cover you can do that with all kinds of different you know methods and stuff like that uh, a lot of things what I would do here let's close plants and down a little bit so whenever you're trying to emphasize something you can change that that call I call color direction so that there will be pieces that are brighter than the other you can use a filter or you can use there's other ways to do it all right so if I'm in the forefront or the I should say the camera is in the forefront right the background all that other stuff is not really important to be highlighted at the time right so when you play with shadows it does give you the ability to do that where those type of manipulations uh, can be done and it changes the overall feeling of you know what's going on in the scene and you could pitch that right so if we want the uh, these like this here to be highlighted right you would want that to kind of stand out in the front a little bit and then the other extremes not extremes but the other methods or whatever you can also use those as well and in that essence you're just talking talking about a lot of times you'll see a glow effect um, that's being used most of the time it's the same one because we are limited with the colors um, but whatever whatever you want to do to kind of give it a feeling right the, something that is different from like a flat scene right so could be anything you can use that or you can use the darking uh, the other thing is whenever you do do cutouts you can do uh, cutouts as well right because technically all of this stuff back here is supposed to be illuminated and I'm not going to go over a lot of it but basically you would use that technique a little bit right wherever you needed it to be 
and I'm just using this this is not a final anything <laughs> for the people that were emailing me right so and the in a sense the darker you make it great but sometimes you don't want to go too dark right and you want that shining effect though so whenever you do have that like you know glow effect even if we put something here like uh, let's say orange I want the bright orange one. Yeah, it's a little bit better. Kind of like Halloween orange. Whatever uh, you want to highlight anything. I usually use a line like this because most of the time um, you're not going to be paying attention to that. But whenever you do have anything where you're it's emitting a kind of glow you can use that same technique right so some of them you know maybe emitting a, a certain color right uh, and then again even if you wanted to use this as a, a backdrop where you're like okay well some of these will be a little bit dimmer than others you can do that in kind of like the cut out technique and all that is is you'll have a piece and it's very time consuming you can do it though so basically what would happen is you would have all the different parts that you want to you know give the glow effect to right and there'll be a variety of different colors but either way all of this will be on top of that that dark filter so if you do do the cutout and the uh, like we did over here right so we did the there's a cutout here and we can give it kind of like oh it's probably two it's not transparent enough but just some kind of glow you know what I mean in the back and you can you know do different I sometimes I'll do different colors but most of the time I like uh, red you know and uh, a lot of times I don't like to use that that this color because that's what every everything is basically whenever you're trying to do futuristic type of things with color that's what it is right you see that kind of color um, but you can do all of those things that kind of take away from whatever you want to do with the scene because uh, technically if you have a close-up is shot and you can see this a lot you can manipulate this in the scene to look like glass right so how does glass look like it does glass is flat but it, it's catching all the different colors and different things like that right so whenever you do do anything you can use this haze as well right to give it a kind of feel like it it's a glass right because it's not going to be even all the way so if this is something uh this is a i don't know if you want to call it a touchpad or whatever right you'll see that 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 extended glow right where we where you are and the other option you have is whenever you do get this or oh, I should talk to myself whenever you do get this puppet here you can add all kinds of different techniques so maybe when he's you know controlling the ship maybe you will have little things like this uh, let's use yellows for it this there yellow I always like the brighter yellow alright so if you're doing a scene maybe that every time or, or wherever his fingers are pointing to 
um, you can have this kind of light up and dim away so there's a lot of different features that you can use so once I rig this character and he's kind of like typing away I'll probably use an effect like that where wherever he types I want it just a small you know what I mean not too crazy alright to where it'll open up so if you're thinking about a scene like this right and this is a futuristic type of technology whenever you're manipulating it you can play around with all kinds of shapes so for instance if he touches this I'm gonna use I don't know I call it a wave technique basically so wherever he touches I want it to kind of blow up a little bit and then uh, totally disappear all right, so I I will show that whenever I do put the is that in the first part of this? I can't remember if it is. Anyone on um, Twitter, text me. Let me know if there's some kind of. Uh, I think I did do this, but I did it maybe in the air. You know how they're someone. It's kind of like hologram, but they're typing in the air sort of thing so but anything you want to play around as far as your um, your imagination once you get everything in here and, and all that stuff comes together uh, it does have an effect to whatever you're, you're, you you know you're trying to you're trying to do and colors or anything right sometimes you'll see uh, a scene like this where it'll be oh well this is a red alert right so let's say for red alert you get that blinking you know what I mean that sort of I like blinking better but you can have it phase in and out right so you know maybe the 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 ships you know taking fire or about to go down in some way right and you have this effect where it's just you know and then you would have to have the alarm as well right so all those 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 filters and things like that will play a part uh, in kind of creating the scene so I think the last question was about um, the I guess you would call it a, a mini score but everything has uh, like a sound to it in a way can't remember which one did I use, did I use the arranger I can't remember so let's go ahead and let me see which one can I can't remember what I did with the Open <sighs> Can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember which one it was. I'll do the sound in the second part to this because so I'll go in a little bit more depth. So, yeah, we'll work on that a little bit later. Was that it? So, the sound, and then um, we'll come back to this, you know, the scene here uh, a little bit later. But I'll, I will go over that part. Um, and then for the, you know, blocking that's what it was so for the you know the blocking and everything like that um, I will put all those pieces separated out uh, for all the uh, the members or whatever so you'll be able to kind of play around with it 
uh, with your own uh, kind of scene there. We'll do just a little bit of audio, I guess. So the manipulation on this one, if you want like a basic kind of feel to it, and you want to make it different because a lot of times if you have music similar to uh, another movie, it'll just flash back to that other movie. Um, but whatever, wherever there's like action or maybe a quiet scene, that's what I would. I use I would use something that's kind of ambient it's something that you haven't heard before because it kind of takes you out of what's going on in the scene and get that ability to use that and again whatever uh, kind of vibe you like you could do that second. Gotta save something that I did before. So, but we'll, we'll go over the, the sounds a little bit on the uh, the next video. This one will be going up on uh, YouTube. So, if you are um, one of the members, you'll be able to see the breakdown of this. But it'll also have it won't have all the like blocking and everything else uh, set up in that same way. Um, but I'll be working on some different things for YouTube in the future.
Uh, appreciate you watching the video. I hope you have a great rest of your day or night.